Good morning, everyone. I see Lynette and Janet and Connie. Hello, my friends. How are you today? We've got a fun little quick project planned for you that features a lot of cool tools, which some of you probably have. But if not, you might want them after today. We'll see. So we'll give it a little bit, a few more people to join. Hey, fancy pants. So it's Halloween weekend. Are you guys ready? I'm anticipating no children at my house, so I'm not <laughs> buying candy. Got the lights out. Gonna be a Halloween Scrooge. We usually don't get kids anyway, so. And if I get candy, I eat it and I need to lose some weight. So, all that said, no candy. Hey Pam, so don't come to my house trick-or-treating, you'll be sad. <laughs> the project I'm gonna work on today involves the AccuQuilt. I don't, I don't remember if we've done an AccuQuilt one or not. Know. We haven't. So. The quilt behind me, this little table topper, was done with the Accu quilt, and I think it was done with the flying geese dye, if I remember correctly. It's been a while. It was a class I was going to teach, but then COVID hit, so we didn't teach it. Hey, Joe. Hey, Dee. Hey, Jeannie. So we didn't teach it. But anyway, as you, if you could see it up close, you would notice that the points match. And believe me, the points don't match because I'm an excellent quilter, because that's just not true. The points match because the dyes make it so easy to sew accurately. In fact, in the store here, we have a Hunter's Star sample, which was really fun to make. And I, I guess it's a more difficult pattern, but with, um, with our wonderful Aki quilt, it's not so difficult. So today, let me switch to my workspace camera. Today, I am going to be using the gnome die. The cute, I just love gnomes. They're so cute. So I'm gonna be using that. And with that die, you need this little six inch, um, it's to cover the dies. What do they call this? Mat. Mat. Oh, there you go, mat. <laughs> Not bad, it's that simple. And here's my little Aki quilt die. So I know, Lynette, I have all kinds of plans for this die. I actually just bought it. I was gonna buy it last year, but I think we sold out. So we had one, so I grabbed it. And then I brought my cute little Go Me. See how cute it is, it just, I was able to put this in the computer bag and everything that I had to bring today all fit in that little bag. I know, it's so cute. And actually there are quite a few dies that you can use. As long as it's not wider than the six inches, you could use it. So here's my little sample for today. Little tea towel. Let me go back to the other camera. It probably shows better. Little tea towel, isn't that cute? So it's really cute, but I have all kinds of plants what I want to do. Because gnomes are my very fave. Also with this die, there's a free download for embroidery. So they, I use the satin stitch and I actually am going to cut and embroider today. So I use the satin stitch one. They also give you a blanket stitch one. And they also give you kind of a looser zigzag, I believe. So it's like super cute. So Jill, what do you, exactly do you have at your house? Do you have that quilt behind you? That was actually a free pattern from Mackie Quilt. So if you check them out, they have a lot of free patterns. But of course we would like you to order the dies through us. We would appreciate that very much. And we honor any deals that AccuQuilt's giving, we honor those deals. Okay, so my tools today will be the little go, the die, some fabric. Now this fabric I have already pre-fused with Foriani applique. So this is gonna be his beard. 
This is a little nose. Shoes. Hat. Hi, Diane. Hi, Doris. Hat. And um, shirt, whatever you want to call this little outfit. And then we're going to use a 5-inch, a 5 by 7 hoop. And this hoop is hooped with a uh, water soluble that's sticky. So, and I'm going to and I'm going to use this tool to score the stabilizer. It's hard for you to see that. It's called uh, the embroidery wand. And I'm going to use a marker to mark my stabilizer to find the center. And then of course, a tea towel. All right. So let's get cutting. So here's my die. And let me point to the different things on the die. This is his hat. This is his beard. This is his shirt. This is his nose. This is his foot. I mean his shoes. So we only need one, 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 but we need two of these. Now, if you have pre, if you're using a fusible on your fabric, AccuQuilt would normally, if the fabric doesn't have a fusible on it, it can cut to six layers. But with the fusible, it's four. But at this time, I'm only going to cut one, 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 and two. So I'm going to cut my fabric's bigger than I need it. So I'm going to cut it to more or less fit the, the die. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Here we go. Oh, you can't see that. So I'm just going to cut it so I'll make sure I cover the die. So you know this gnome, I'm making him as a Christmas theme gnome, but he doesn't have to be Christmas, he can be anything. I could have made him into um, a Halloween gnome, it just depends on what fabric you use, right? Now if you have um, software, embroidery software, you could actually bring it in and make embellishments for it. There we go. So there's his beard. Can you imagine if you had to, if you were doing this uh, as an applique project and you had to cut all this in the hoop, especially the nose and the f little shoes, that'd be really a pain. It's doable, but it's painful. So here's my little nose. And I need two shoes. Go. Two shoes. Hi, Margie. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Evie. All right, there we go. So let me move this out of the way so I can bring my cutter closer to me. Oh, sorry. There we go. Put them right in the middle. All right, so here's my die with my fabric. I want to put my mat on top of it. And these mats you can flip around when it starts to get too many indentations in it. Now I'm going to slip my die in there. I think I have it on the wrong side. I do. Oh, oh there we go. So you got to kind of push it in to get started. Now, AccuQuilt makes a cutter bigger than this, which I have that one, which is also a hand crank. And then they make an electric one. So a lot of our customers who have arthritis have chosen to get the electric one. Right, so I'm going to just scooch this die a little bit, like, I mean the mat, a little bit like that. And look, there's my little hat. There's my hat. Here's the body. Here's his beard. So easy, huh? I know, it's so easy. Here's his nosy. And here's his feet. Okay, so that's it for the cutter. See how easy that is? This is a great tool to have.
Mm -hmm. Like I said, when you're doing quilts, the the dyes just make it so easy. All right, so I'm going to pack up my little go. All you do is fold in the sides. That's it. And the sack's like a handle. Let's see the handle. And we'll put inside. It's actually pretty. It's heavy, even though know, it's little. Now I'm going to grab my tea towel. And you can also embellish the tea towel with other things as you like. This is the top. So like if you're going to hang it. So this will be where I want my design. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to bother ironing it. I did iron it, but when I packed it up, it got crinkled. There we go. So I'm going to fold it in half, like twice to find the center. Oh, look, I have my, we have all these nifty tools here and I always forget to use them. My little hand press. And I'm gonna get out my Frixion pen too. I'm gonna show you how I decide where my design was gonna go. All right, here we are. So let's just press this better. So we get a clear cut, right? I mean, not a cut. Got cutting on the brain. Clear mark for our center. And we'll unfold the towel. There's our center. Now what I did at home to figure out where I wanted my design was I laid him out on here. So I put his little feet like right here. And then I would put his body. We don't need the nose. Actually, we don't need the beard. Well, we do need the beard. The beard will go like this in the hat. So I kind of, I kind of like that space here, right? So what I'm going to do, because we have some marvelous tools on our sewing machines that help us to see where we're going to sew. So this is approximate. I just want to know where my feet are. So I'm just drawing little marks for my feet. So when I get to the machine, I'm going to use a projector and I'm going to line up my feet there, approximately. As you know, Salima and I, oops, I almost lost his nose. Salima and I are not perfectionists because we have a lot of fun. All right, so that's my towels ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is get my stabilizer ready to go. So just like I said before, it is a water-soluble stabilizer with the sticky. So I'm going to use my embroidery wand, and it's got a point. So I'm going to use that to score my stabilizer. Oops, get a little carried away and we'll scored the hoop. <clears throat> there we go. So we're scored. And then we're going to peel back the stabilizer. It's almost like a freezer paper, kind of, to expose the sticky. You could also. Um, like the magnetic hoops come in different sizes, like the dime ones. I think quite a few different sizes. I actually have a five by seven magnetic hoop at home that I thought would be great when I'm sewing um, heavy towels. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hoop and line it up to lines on my cutting mat. Oh, you can actually see them. So you can see the lines here. So I'm going to use those. Let's see how well this pin will work on here. I'm going to use those. To, oh, works good, much better here than it did at home. So I just, I know they aren't straight. I could do, use the ruler, but that's okay. Then I'm going to take my towel. And you know what? That's a... That pen happens to be a disappearing ink pen with air. And look how fast it disappeared. Very fast. Let's try this one. 
That's why I was having trouble with it at home. I didn't realize that. I need a water soluble one instead. Let's go to where the lines are more pronounced. There we go. Okay, so I've lined up my things in the hoop to the lines again. There we go. I know it's scratchy lines, but that's okay. We just need it for a quick second. If you guys, you could use rulers, anything like that. Good morning, Bertie. Good morning, Diane. Oh, happy Halloween to you, too. Okay, here we go. So I have my hoop mark. Here's my towel. I know this is where I want my little feet to be. So I'm going to fold my towel in half on that line. Morning, Gloria. And I'm going to take it and probably the middle of the design is probably actually about there. So I'm going to take this over. I'm going to line up what I think is the middle of the design and that center to those lines I drew on my hoop. And I'm going to press it down. Oh, this is this looks good. And I am going to press it down so it's all here. So see, no fussy fussy trying to hoop this project. There we go. Now I have my colors lined up. I know that it's going to stitch a placement line for my feet first. Now, we, uh, there's not a tack down, so they'll stitch a placement line. I'll put the feet down, then I'll do a satin stitch. Then it'll be his little coat. Then I think it's the beard. Then I think it's the hat and the nose. I think that's how the lineup was. But anyway, we are going to go the machine now and go ahead and sew that out. So I'm going to get my fabrics lined up also. Here's my shoes, my nose, my beard, my body, and my hat. Actually, the body will come first. I think this is the order. There we go. And it's, you know, I tried to, you have to keep it organized because it, I don't know, you can lose that little nose and those shoes real easy. All right, let's move to the machine now. So I'm going to just wake her up. And I'm going to select embroidery. I already have my stick in the machine with the design. This is like my pocket, my USB stick, and I have an AccuQuilt Designs folder. And I'm going to select PES. And there's all my little gnomes. So the this is the satin stitch one. I think this is the zigzag one. And this is the blind, uh, not blanket stitch one. So I'm going to go ahead and say satin. Oh, well that's okay. Oh, sorry. Set. Okay, I just wanted to tell me it wasn't giving me enough thread information, but that's all right. We can work with it. All right, let me cut my thread and change threads. So as you know, we want to cut. I know you can't see on the camera, but I'm cutting near the thread stand and I'm pulling my thread through the needle. We do not want to pull thread back because it's not good for your tension assembly. So I'm just gonna thread up my black thread to be ready. And then we will get set. This uh, design only takes like 10 minutes to stitch out. I mean, what would take the longest for this design is if we had to cut those little pieces. But thank you, we do not. And I, I really like, because the pieces are so tiny, I do like the Floriani applique for it because they have, it has a sticky back on it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put my project, mount my hoop. So this would make cute little hostess gifts, little towels, maybe put in a basket with some jellies and some kind of muffin mix or something. All right, so I've got my hoop in. I'm going to say embroidery. 
And now I'm going to do the projector. And you'll have to. I'm going to move my camera so you can see the projector. Maybe I can get in a little closer. Sorry. Close your eyes if it makes you like motion sick. You can already see where it's probably hard for you to see that. So I'm going to move my projector down right right then it was kind of on the on the beard. I want to see where my feet are. I'm just cutting away a little bit of stabilizer. I want to see where my feet are. There, I can almost see my feet. I think um, I'm going to move it over a little bit. Let me find the center again. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit my layout button and I am. All right, so my first color, like I said, will be. Sorry, my thread was a little messed up, so I'm going to throw my needle. My first color is going to be the, tack, the placement line for my feet. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that out. Oh, it's perfect. A little bit, little bit lower than I was expecting, but that's okay. Actually, quite a bit lower, but we're still good. All right, there's the placement. So I'm going to go ahead, oh, it's going to come around again. I want to make sure I can see that placement line. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and peel off the back of my little feet. So then with the Floriani applique, it makes it like a post-it. So if I don't get it right in the right place the first time, I can pick it up and move it. That looks pretty good, so I'm gonna press it down. And see, now that'll stay in place, and since it's so tiny, you really need that. You need, to, you need it to stay in place, because you don't want to stick your hand in there. Oh, I think I have my boot upside down, there we go. You don't want to stick your hand in there while it's sewing and try to hold it down. All right, there we are. So our feet are in place. I'm going to go ahead and press my start button and go ahead and sew out the feet. Could have scanned it, brought in the design, and lined it up. Yes, I could have done that. Hey, Liz. I know this little... So I was thinking of Salima, you know, um, taught a class making a table runner, and I kind of did an adaptation to it. So I'm thinking about making another one. I've already made two, because I like that class so much. I am thinking about making one and putting the gnomes on it, because I think that'd be super duper cute. Like having gnomes dancing around the table. And then gnomes on aprons, gnomes on towels. And like I said, you can make your gnomes for any holiday. It doesn't have to be a Christmas gnome. This just happens to be a little Christmas gnome. And every occasion gnome towel. You could make a gnome a month. Yeah, that'd be so cute. Wouldn't it be cute if you were like going to a bridal shower or something and you made a groom gnome and a bride gnome? 
All right, here we go. Now we are moving on to his coat. So let me go ahead and put the green in. So it's only, this is in total 10 minutes. So it's really quick. Yeah, that would be cute on uh, Jeannie's. So they had a good idea. I don't know why I like them so much. Oh, uh, actually, let me, while this shows out, I'll read you something I looked up. Because I was like, what is the origin of gnomes? So the gnomes were first made in Germany. And then this, I don't know if he was a member of the royal family or what, but he brought them to England, and that's how the garden gnomes started. So let me grab my phone. I'll read you that. I thought it had, I don't know, to me they look kind of Scandinavian, so I thought it was a, I, I was going to let my people take credit for it. But it's not, it's German. All right, where is origin of gnomes? Okay, hang on. Let me place my coat before I get too excited about the origin of gnomes. Here's my coat. Isn't that cute? All this fabric, of course, came from AAA. I'm sure we have fabric appropriate for a gnome for every month. Could be a little Valentine's gnome. I think we should do that, Lynn. I think that would I be super cute. I think it cute. would be cute and make a great store display. All right, there we are. There's this coat. So let's go ahead and start that. All right, the origin of gnomes. Oh, here we go. This is the one I read first. When Sir Charles Isham brought 21 terracotta garden gnomes to England to decorate his 90-foot rock, rockery in 1847, he created a sensation in the United Kingdom for the bearded garden helpers. Sir Charles has found the statues. He had found the statues in Nuremberg, Germany, a country steeped in the folklore of gnomes, trolls, fairies, and other forest folk where they are known to be cheery, if not slightly mischievous, creatures who offered late night assistance in gardens and the protection of property. As early as the 1600s, garden statuaries in Europe had evolved to include a key figure known as Gobi, Italian for dwarf or hunchback. In the 19th century Germany, these demu <laughs> men with pointed hats, rounded be rotund bellies, and white beards became known as Garden Spetsberg, Garden Dwarfs. Much like today, these garden do-gooders -go elicited strong feelings on either side of the spectrum. In 19th century England, even with the Isham family, some thought the gnomes were unfit for the aesthetic of the palatial estate and Sir Charles' daughters cleared the garden of all but one, which remained hidden in sight until decades later. Anyway, they're so cute. So that then they were. Friday, Sunday, and a history lesson. Yeah, history lesson on gnomes. All in one. All in one. All right. <laughs> My little coat stitched out. So now we are on to the beard. So there's your little gnome history. We are on to the beard. Which is white. And I chose a white sparkly fabric with silver speckles in it. So he looks like he has frost in his beard. Which is appropriate if he's been out in the garden. There we go. Let's keep going on this one. I was looking, there was some more they had. Oh, so here's one that says it started in ancient Rome. I don't know. Here's our beard. Mm -hmm. 
cuddle bug. I am not sure, D. I'm sure these dyes won't work on the cuddle bug just because of the sizes and everything. I'm not sure about cuddle bugs. So D was asking if the dyes are comparable to cuddle bugs, but I'm not familiar with the cuddle bug. I'm are not you? Familiar, Sorry about that, D. All right, there we go. I've placed my beard. Oops. Place my beard down so we can get going on that. Look at, we're like more than halfway done with our Nomi. So I kind of, I kind of think I, I don't know. Some of you knew Bud. He played Santa Claus here at AAA one year for Christmas, and he kind of looked like a garden gnome. So maybe that's why I like them. So much fun just to watch our machine stitch out, isn't it? You know, I did a stitch out at home, and I'm doing a stitch out here, and the stitch out here is turning out better than the one at home, and I bet you my machine at home needs to be cleaned and oiled. Shame on me! So we won't look close at the one I did at home. So the, Gloria, does the cuddle bug basically work the same where you use, it has a die that pushes through and you put a mat over the die? I don't know. So that little, tall, this little table topper quilt I brought in to show you. So that was a quilt. Like I said, I was going to teach that class and then COVID hit, but guess what? I just put the binding on it yesterday. So it's been sitting in my sewing room probably for a year, if not more. So. And then, of course, those of you who have scanning cuts, you could always look for a gnome out in the free clip world clip art world and do that but this is just so easy and so cute gnomes are supposed to be simple hi Arlene welcome so we're just watching the machine do all the work almost done here it is really pretty. <clears throat> if you guys have things you want to see for Friday Fun Day, drop us a comment and we will. We're always looking for suggestions because sometimes you just need a little inspiration. Of course, we want the projects to be fairly quick so we can do it in like an hour, an hour, actually less than an hour because the store opens at 10 o'clock. So I know we have a couple gnome dyes. So if you're in a rush to get a gnome dye, come in and see us. Okay, the hat stitching next. Hi, Pat. Our hat is stitching next. Supposed to be hot again in LA today. I don't know when we're gonna get our fall weather. We had a minute of it. Literally a minute. Yeah, literally a minute. All right, I'm stitching the placement line for the hat. We're getting there. My cute little Nomi. What are you guys drinking while you're watching this? I'm drinking some hot tea. I have my coffee at home. 
I'm a, I have hazelnut coffee with hazelnut creamer. All right. Look at We're ready for the hat. This, and I would not attempt this without the this Foriani applique. Or there's an embellish, re, anything that's repositionable. I'm telling you, it's a lifesaver. Lifesaver. And the products are on our website. And the products we feature today are on our website. You know what? I'm going to slide this off a little bit because it's kind of out of my range of vision. And I don't want them to have a crooked hat. There we go. Hey, look at them. They're so cute. Oh, one thing I forgot. I'll wait till we get back to that in person camera and I'll tell you something else that I should have done, but I didn't do because I didn't. I don't think I had it at home. All right. I'm putting my foot down and I am. Um, Sewing around the hat, then all we have left is this little nosy. So I have some garden gnomes at home. I have three that are, you know that see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. I have that, those at home. Yeah, Dorothy, it would be you because um, everything's fine and you know, if our internets at home are at high speed, we get buffering issues. <clears throat> Even if we have high speed, sometimes we get buffering issues. I don't know if it's because of everybody's using it. Oh, so right now, you, oh, pomegranate mint green tea. That sounds delicious. Let's see, that's what... That's what Connie's drinking. Uh, let's see. Oh, pumpkin tea. That sounds good. That's Dee's drink of choice this morning. Cold and rainy in Northeast Ohio. Oh, you're going to get snow next week. Oh, Margie. You guys get four seasons. We basically have one season. So, yeah, the teas are great. So... Fancy Pants is being good. She's drinking water, but she's going to move on to... She's moving on to iced tea. Oh, so you're making homemade bread, Fancy Pants? My mom used to make homemade bread. And you're doing it the old-fashioned way. You're kneading by hand. So my new favorite... Oh, ginger orange tea. That sounds good. My new favorite thing to watch on Netflix, which actually I've been watching it for a while and I just keep re-watching it, is uh, the British Baking um, Contest. So they do all kinds of stuff. They do bread. And what's interesting about it is they do all these recipes you never even heard of. So it's kind of fun. And plus they have Paul Hollywood. He's so handsome. Here we go. We're almost done. But the bread is always the biggest challenge, right? So I am admiring you, Fancy, that you're making bread. And if you actually had an extra over loaf, you, you, we wouldn't mind if you shared with us. It'd be okay. No complaints. What kind of bread are you needing, Fancy? My mom used to also make um, cinnamon rolls that she would rise and so good all right last part is the nose the nose nose i think you guys if you have this dye you should post some pictures of what you've done with it please the Great British Sewing Bee. Oh, I haven't heard of that. I, oops, my needle came unthreaded. Hang on, hang on. Only on the live, right? So that's no problem. I can take care of that. Let me just double check and make sure I'm in the right place. All right, there we go. I'm in the right place. So, I hadn't heard of that. The Great British Sewing Bee. I'm going to have to look for that. I Cinnamon raisin sourdough bread, but I'm using the KitchenAid for neat. Yeah, it's much easier on the hands. 
Oh, so you have a sourdough starter, huh? So they say the sourdough is better for us. It's better for our digestive system. All right, so my nose is down. I'm going to once again pull the hoop off because his nose is little. Well, not compared to the rest of them, but it's little for us. All right, here we go. Place in the nose. There he is. Go short. Okay, here we go. Look how fast this is. You could guys could whip these out so fast. And like I said, the the um, embroidery designs free. Yeah, you have to feed that sourdough starter. Oh, Janet, you are so lucky you get to take part in that. Yeah. I used to have a bread machine a long time ago. I gave it to my brother. In fact, I even forgot I gave it to him. And he's still using it. He made a homemade bread the other day. But that's a cheater way, right? That's okay. Whatever it takes to get it done. There we are. Speaking of getting it done... Wait for the sound. Don't you just love that sound? There we go. Let's take her off. And turn back to my workstation. And it's good. So when I embroider at home, I try to line up all my colors and line them up in the order that they would stitch in so that it just makes it so much easier. It goes bim bam boom. Sister neighbor gets warm stuff from the oven. She is so lucky. Lucky, lucky. I wish you guys lived closer to us so we could get have warm bread. Here we go. Look at him, he's so cute. And believe so me, the stitch cute. out's better than what I did at home. But now I know. I should have cleaned and oiled my machine. It's probably bad. I should practice what I preach, right? Isn't it adorable? So look at this. You can make a little set. So we have, and we have lots of these gray towels. Look, see? We have, look at them. So what I wanted to bring up to you is, if you look close, I mean, well, on this one you can kind of see it. You can see his little shirt through the beard, right? Well, we have this product called Top Cover. What I would have done is laid that down here, and then when you stitched out the beard, this wouldn't have shown through. But if I have it at home, I probably couldn't have found it. But we do have that here. Oh, you got a new great-grandson a couple hours ago. That's great. Okay, let me switch over to me. There we go. So what I'll do to finish it off is I'll cut close to the stabilizer around the gnome. And then I will use the... You can... So there are several ways to get the water-soluble stabilizer off without actually washing it. You can take a wet paper towel and iron it. Or you can make a solution of three parts fabric softener to 10 parts water, spray it on, and then use like a coffee filter to dab it up. So if you were giving these as gifts and you don't necessarily want to wash them, you could do that. So here are our little gnomies. Aren't they so cute? I don't know which one. I, which one do you like better, the polka dotty or the stripe? Oh, they're both so they're cute. They're both really cute. That's oh, I love nice. it. Yes. All right, my friends. That is our Fast Fun Friday for today. So if you have any questions, post them. We can go back and look. And like Salima said, these products are available on our website. So just go check it out. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. Have a nice, safe Halloween. And fancy pants. Enjoy that bread. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye-bye.